and lifts his shirt off over his head. I think you've seen too much, he chuckles slyly. He sits astride me again, pulls my t-shirt up, and I think he's going to take it off me, but he rolls it up to my neck and then pulls it up over my head so he can see my mouth and my nose, but it covers my eyes. And because I'm folded over, I can't see a thing through it. <laughs> mm, he breathes uh, appreciatively. This just gets better and better. I'm going to get a drink. Leaning down, he kisses me, his lips tender against mine, and his weight shifts off the bed. I hear the quiet creak of the bedroom door. I wonder if she drink. stays there with her shirt over her mouth. Where? Here. Portland, Seattle? I strain to hear him. I, I can make out low rumblings, and I know he's talking to Kate. Oh, no. He's practically naked. What's she going to say? I hear a faint popping sound. What's that? He returns the door creaking once more. His feet padding across the bedroom floor and ice tinkling against glass as it swirls in liquid. What kind of drink? He shuts the door and shuffles around, removing his pants, then drops to the floor, and I know he's naked. He sits astride me again. Are you thirsty, Anastasia? He asks, his voice teasing. Yes, I breathe, because my mouth is suddenly <laughs> parched. I hear the ice clink against the glass, and he puts it down again and leans down and kisses me, pouring a delicious crisp liquid into my mouth, as he does. It's white wine. It's so unexpected hot, though it's chilled, and Christian's lips are cool. More, he whispers. I nod. It tastes all the more divine because it's been in his mouth. He leans down, and I drink another mouthful from his lips. Oh, my. Let's not go too far. We know your capacity for alcohol is limited, Anastasia. Who talks like